Come on. Well, come on. You said you wanted to do it. What are you doing? Get over here. I don't want to do it anymore. Well, you watched the movie. You said you wanted to review it. You want me to do it? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. But you sit there. And you keep your mouth shut until I'm done then, okay? Okay. Hello, and welcome back to Please Don't Make a Scene. And in today's episode, we're talking about Split. Written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, uh, Split is about Kevin, a man with 23 different uh, personalities uh, within himself, who kidnaps this, these three teenage girls to use them in some kind of ceremony where he is going to unleash his 24th personality, which he calls the Beast. So, that's the premise. Uh, quite, uh, kind of a simple premise, actually. Um, which is a little deceiving because this is not a simple movie. Um, it's it's quite dense actually, not because of, of of the plot. The plot is pretty simple, but because of uh, James McAvoy's performance. Because if this movie um, focuses on you know, if you just wanna you know say that this movie focuses on something particular, it is um, James McAvoy's performance. He does not portray all 24 different personalities, which is a little disappointing, but that's, that would, you know, thinking about it now, it, it, it would seem kind of ridiculous to have 24 different uh, characters played by the same person. He does, however, portray, I guess, uh, six or seven different characters at various times in the movie. And this felt like a return to form for M. Night Shyamalan, who like for the last decade almost, haven't really made the best movies. And it's sad because when he got his first like breakout hit, uh, The Sixth Sense, back in 99, people called him uh, the next Spielberg, you know. And he followed it up, of course, with Unbreakable, who, um, at least according to me, was almost better than The Sixth Sense. And then he did Signs, which was also a great movie. And then came The Village, and after that, it kind of just went downhill with movies like The Lady in the Water, The Happening, and Avatar The Last Airbender. And let's not even talk about After Earth. Let's just, let's just, let's not think about it. So, um, going in to see this, I was kind of nervous about uh, what I would think about this movie, because I like Shy Malin's movies. And I wanted to like this one as well. And I gotta say, it was a pretty good movie. And sometimes it was actually a very good movie. Because you have this central performance as by James McAvoy that, that really anchors the movie. And you know, from the get-go, you get the feeling that, oh wait, this is a quality movie. It does, however, get a little shaky here and there. Um, because... Shyamalan seems to not really be able to rein in his actors at all times, uh, which is understandable because you have one person playing so many different characters, there's bound to be some over-the-top stuff there. He does the best he can to rein in the, all these performances. And even the teenage girls at some times can feel a little over-the-top, um, except for Anya Taylor-Joy, let's just say that she's a great actress. Um, and she does this very well. But the two others, whose names I can't remember right now, um, doesn't always uh, get up to her level. But yeah, the main focus of the movie is definitely James McAvoy's performance. And uh, it is great. Like I said, it got, does go over the top from time to time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet money on him receiving any um, nominations here, awards nominations or anything like that. But it's just so much fun to watch. And not only that, the way this movie um, blends uh, comedy and horror uh, is, is very interesting. It's, it's not something you've seen in a lot of other movies. Because, well, blending is the wrong word, actually. It's quite jarring. Because in one five-minute scene, 
you could be laughing out loud at one moment at something that uh, McAvoy is doing, especially when he plays uh, this one character called Hedwig, which is supposed to be a nine-year-old boy. Um, you would, the, the entire cinema would just be laughing out loud, you know? And it was funny. It was genuinely funny. It wasn't just like, oh, it's so weird, I gotta laugh. No, 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 you laughed because it was funny. And then it would just switch like that and become really tense, almost like disturbingly tense. You kind of almost had to you know, look away. And this would be in the same scene without even cutting at points. And that felt very jarring, but it felt deliberately jarring. Like he wanted it to kind of clash uh, these two uh, emotions. And um, I guess that was like a, a, a choice of style because the movie is about uh, very different personalities within one and the same person. It makes sense that he would do this. Um, so the, the movie is very stylish like that. Not, not that it has like a visual flair or anything, but just in the way he directs and conducts the actors within the scenes. It's not something you say a lot nowadays when it comes to movies, but you could really tell who had directed this movie. This felt like a genuine Shyamalan movie. Because he usually does this mix horror and comedy. Just think of the happening. In the middle of this, um, this terrible uh, scene where they're trying to escape this suicide virus, um, they stop and talk about the nutritional values of hot dogs. And uh, it doesn't really that that kind of that kind of um, clash between genres didn't really work in that movie. However, in Split, it does work. Um, so you get the feeling that this movie he really tailor made it for himself. This was a movie where his style of directing and his style of writing really hit home. So it really was a return of form uh, for Shyam Allen. And this is his movie all the way through. Um, even if McAvoy takes center stage uh, for like 90% of the movie, this really is Shia Malin's movie. This is um, where he can really showcase that he is still this great director that made all these great movies back in the early 2000s. And um, because of that, it just becomes a really, really enjoyable film. Not perfect though, like I said. It does go over the top at points. Um, and one of his trademarks uh, is having uh, a few like um, characters do nothing but give you uh, this deadpan expression, giving you just a bunch of exposition. Now this happens in almost all of his movies where you just have like two or three minutes of one shot at this person giving you exposition. And it's not the most exciting scene in the movie. However, this also feels like a deliberate move to get all of the exposition out of the way, you know, get all of that out of the way so that we know all we need to know about the characters so that the movie can continue. So even if these scenes kind of uh, drag the flow down, it's still like a necessary evil from his, from, from his side. Yeah. I don't really have much more to say. This this is kind of a hard movie to um, to to analyze, um, especially since I just watched it. So it's, uh, it's still fresh in my head, and there's a lot spinning around there right now. Because yeah, it it was quite dense with all these characters um, and the concept of of uh, multiple personality disorder and what that can do to a person, and uh, and why uh, a person would develop all these different personalities. To almost hide your your real identity behind so yeah it's quite dense but you can still enjoy it even if you don't want to dig too deep and all that stuff it's still an enjoyable movie and like i said a very um stylish movie so uh, what would i rate this then well like i said great movie just not perfect so i have to give it a 7 out of 10. Well, I thought the movie sucked. Hey, hey, I told you to shut up. Okay. You didn't okay. want to okay. do this review, Sorry. so you sit there and you be quiet until I'm done. I'm almost done, okay? Be quiet.
Sorry. Well, uh, actually, I'm already done. Uh, that's all I had to say about this movie. Even if you're on the fence about this because it is an M. Night Shyamalan movie, I would highly recommend you go and see it. If you like The Sixth Sense, if you like Signs, if you like Unbreakable, you're really going to like this. And um, I know it's still early in the year, but so far this is the best movie of 2017. Yeah, it, um, it doesn't really have to compete with much, but still. As always, um, thanks for watching. Uh, please like if you like this video and subscribe if you want to watch more and be sure to check out some of my other videos um, up here But that's that um, that was split and until next time have a good one